Hello and welcome to eating. Welcome to eating. Today, this is what we're eating. Now I know some of you are going to say this looks disgusting. This is what we're eating, lads. This looks disgusting, right? I can, especially on this camera, it looks absolutely disgusting. What it is is one of my mom's low-fat cracker, like bread alternative crackers. Hmm. I guess. Hmm. It's closest to like a flatbread. Um, so we got this flatbread with uh, like a low fat, low calorie flatbread with like spinach, just sauteed spinach on top with a bunch, well not that much, but horseradish, Coleman's English mustard and ketchup. And salt and pepper and that's it that's what's on here and you may think that sounds disgusting but it's actually quite nice I mean think about it everything in this meal tastes good on its own right I know mustard tastes good personally I'm more of an English mustard guy over everything else over American and French but you know they have their place but I'm an English mustard guy so English mustard is fucking delicious Spinach is delicious, like some sautéed spinach, you can't knock it. Always radish is delicious, and ketchup is nice. There's nothing wrong with this meal, but uh, I know I'm going to get some comments. They're like, god damn, English cooking, English cuisine, classic English cuisine. Let me tell you, okay, before you have a go at me, I made some good ass fucking meals today. Alright, today I made a fucking puttanesca, I'm, I'm, you know, if you don't know what that is, it's pasta, chop up some anchovies, some garlic, fry them for a little bit, then you put in some tin chopped tomatoes or some fresh tomatoes, ch fresh chopped tomatoes, but uh, I chose to do tin because I wanted more of a substantial sauce, when you use the fresh tomatoes it's more of just like a, you know, you don't get all the sauciness from, from tin tomatoes, so I use tin chopped tomatoes, um, then some vermouth, you know, plenty of, uh, uh, what's it called, pepper, salt, a little bit of salt, you don't need too much, plenty of anchovies and some black olives and some capers with some penne pasta, shit's fucking delicious boys, shit's delicious, one of my favourite pasta recipes, I make it all the time, that's what I made today, great, great puttanesca, and I also had as a snack, um, some scrambled eggs and smoked salmon, so, you know, it's not like I'm lower class. I'm not I'm not eating lower class British English food. This, my friends, is what I eat when I'm like, well, I'm hungry because I'm drunk. Uh, but I don't want to eat something that's got too much, you know. I used to not care about this shit, but it's probably good that I started caring about this shit. I don't want to eat something like too unhealthy. And spinach, I love spinach. It's probably one of my favorite green vegetables. And this I've actually overcooked a little bit. Not too bad, but personally I like it just wilted, like uh, barely cooked, just enough to be um, wilted, so it's even still got some of the crunch in it. Whereas this is a little further than that. It's still good, don't get me wrong. But, um, yeah. Honestly, I'm not going to say this is, like, my masterpiece or anything. But, uh, but I, I like, I'm a big fan of horseradish, I'm a big fan of mustard, and I'm a big fan of ketchup. You can't really go wrong. I know, it's not exactly the most substantial meal of all time, but it's just supposed to be a healthy snack to tide me over. Now I'm just literally eating pure, pure sauces from the side of the bowl. Because I've had enough goddamn food today, I don't know why I'm hungry. I had plenty of food. 
Hopefully that tides me over. If not, I don't know what I'll even eat. But anyway, this video is about a lot of things. I have a lot of shit to talk about. I, I've been kind of semi-considering making a, a under no thank you's bed, but I decided to just do it in a video instead. I don't know if that was a good way to start the video off at all. Um, because now that I've eaten, like, I've gone all stupid. I got shit all in my mouth. I got that fucking biscuit cracker thing, flatbread thing, all in my teeth. I got to squeeze it out. Not something good to show on video. It's still in there. It's all fucked up. Anyway. Let me wash my meal down. So, what am I talking about here? Well, I got lots of stuff to talk about. Number one, um, I'm watching this channel Bored and Bankrupt recently. I know a lot of people have been recommending this to me for quite a while. IRL friends to internet friends to everyone, been rec YouTube even been recommending me Bored and Bankrupt. And I watched one of his videos a while ago, and I was kind of turned off by his um. His personality, he's a little bit corny, he's very, very corny, in fact, he's a very corny human being. I know if you're not English, you might not understand the, the, the archetype that he embodies, but the, he definitely embodies an archetype. Um, I think there's subtleties in his accent that come out that, um, that clue me into some things about him. Like, I think he's actually a lot richer than, than, than he portrays. Or comes from a more upper class background than he portrays, purely from the way that he sometimes says words. Like sometimes it slips. He often drops his T's, which is very common in English. Um, and he, you know, he has he has a sort of accent, like a sort of London accent. Very London. He's very London, but he's got like I don't, I don't really know what an example is, but but like sometimes it'll slip out. He'll pronounce a vowel in a way that's very RP, very received pronunciation, which is like the Queen's posh English, basically. Uh, and that sort of clues me into think like, maybe he grew up with a little more money and is sort of adapted to, to life in, in London. But whatever. That's not actually important. What is important is this video is pretty cool. I was turned off by his personality at first because um, he's basically the exact opposite of me. I could, there's like he goes around Indian places just being like hi what's up to everybody even if he doesn't speak the language very well he'll start using it I would never do that I, I get worried listen listen I went to a Japanese restaurant the other day and I, I was like freaking out because I, I automatically when it came time to order right I wasn't even thinking and I start I started saying like uh, gyoza like that's not even really Japanese pronunciation, but it's different in England. In English, we'd say gyoza, gyoza, right? And I said gyoza for the gyoza dumplings, right? I said uh, gyoza, and then I said uh, katsudon, right? Actually, it wasn't katsudon, it was unagi don, right? But in the menu, it only said unadon, right? And I was like, what? Well, maybe. And then after I ordered, I realized what I'd done. And I was like, maybe they think I'm some sort of weeb. I hope they don't think I'm some sort of weeb LARPA pretending to be Japanese with my bad pronunciation. But that's just, like, I didn't even think about it. Because obviously, you know, I'm, that's just how I read the word. I read the word un unagidon, and I'm like, okay, it's an unagidon, right? It's, I know they have it, so I just ordered it without even looking. Like, I know I've had it before from that restaurant. You know, I was bored, and then I started freaking out, like, overthinking it, like... Are they gonna think I'm like trying to be Japanese? Are they gonna think I'm trying to be cool? What was that? A JavaScript error occurred. Weird. But this guy, he's going around India, talking, talking shit, <laughs> talking salam alaikum. He's even doing the hand, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, to random people in the street. I guess they're staring at him because he's a white guy filming in like the middle of the random Indian, like 
like he calls them slums, I don't know what they are, but uh, and he goes around Russia a lot, but then Russia makes more sense because he speaks Russian, and uh, ex-Soviet Union states, Belarus, Ukraine, stuff like that. I guess the right thing to do is to try, like that's what's weird, is like, when I went to France, right, my dad said, even though I wasn't very good at French, I'm still not very good at French, he said, and my dad's lived in France before for a while, he said, even if you don't speak very good French, if you want to go into a shop and buy something, or a restaurant and order something, or something like that, try in French first, and even if you fuck it up, they will respect you for having tried, and they'll 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 treat you better for having at least given it a shot to speak in French, rather than going straight to English. And that kind of stuck with me. It's like, yeah, that is true. I mean, if someone tried, if someone came to me and start, tried to say something in English but it wasn't very clear, right, I would give them more respect than if they just went straight ahead and tried to start saying it in their native language, even if I understood it. Because, I mean, French, in France, most people will understand it, basic English, right? But I, it's a respect thing. France is big big about, like, in, in, in French law, there's a certain amount of stuff that has to be in, in French. Like, they can't have, like, by law, they have to keep a certain amount of French stuff on their media, advertising, so that's what, in, you know, um, to preserve the culture, which makes sense. Not that I think French culture is going to be replaced by English culture anytime soon. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I understand that. So I guess that is what makes sense. Like, even if, you, if I'm in India or something and I learn w the word for hello, or, I don't know, something like that, people, I assume, I guess people would probably be more receptive if I went straight in to try, rather than to, to be like, straight to English, not even give it a shot. Maybe? I don't know. Language is a strange thing. Like if you if you if you meet someone um I still got all this shit in my mouth. It's because it's got seeds in it. The seeds are getting stuck in my teeth. Um If I was to meet someone, look, I don't, as I said, I don't speak many, like, I, I speak a little bit of French, a little bit Japanese, a little bit of Spanish, but not enough to, like, actually have a conversation in any of those languages, just about enough to, like, if I hear, if I see someone on TV speaking, like, if I see someone speaking French, I can probably get just about an idea of, like, the general, like, what the conversation is about, but I couldn't, like, go up to someone and start saying, speaking French very well. Um, like, for example, if I'm playing Counter-Strike and I come into a group of French people, as I often do, I come into a group of French people, um, uh, I can probably understand just about what they're talking about in their conversations. Um, or if I see a, a, some, like, people speaking in Japanese, I can just about... Also, when I say I speak a little bit of Japanese, this isn't just because, like, uh... uh I picked up Japanese from watching anime like a classy gentleman. I I had Japanese lessons as a, as a young child. Um, probably like uh, age, I want to say like age, age 10 to like age 14-ish. I had Japanese lessons. Um, so I, yeah, I already speak a little bit of Japanese. And I can read hiragana and katagana. And some very, very basic kanji. Uh... But I, I never con I never studied very hard, so I'm not very good, and I've forgotten a lot of it since then. And this isn't a bragging video. This is a this is a I'm very bad at speaking other languages video. Um, <laughs> that isn't even the point of this video. It's not even the point I'm trying to make here. The point I'm trying to make here is like I respect this guy for being able to like go out of his comfort zone and go to other countries. But I think he's got, I th I think he's got some like like a. I don't know. It's cool. It's cool that he can start conversations with other people. But the thing I notice is that people are really the same wherever you go. There's there's cultural stuff, but you know, under the surface of it all, people are really everyone in the world seems to be kind of the same. You know, this guy, as soon as he starts drinking with people, like as soon as he starts, as soon as the vodka comes out, everyone sort of gets along. Everyone's sort of fine. The cultural differences sort of fall apart at that point. 
even if you don't speak the language very well, whatever, as soon as you get a little drink in you, everyone is sort of the same deep down. Every human has these shared experiences, and that, for him, is what makes him want to cross these countries, to meet all these people with very different experiences, but still human. And for me, it's the exact opposite. For me, that's why I never want to do this stuff, because it's like, well, I know people. I know what that base humanity is, and I don't like it. I don't want to go around to fucking Ukraine and meet people who are exactly the same as the people here. I don't want to go over, you know, it's the same thing. I don't, there's this base, there's this base, I don't want to, I don't want to say these words. I don't want to, but this is kind of what it's leading me to believe. You ready? Human nature. (laughs) There's this base, it's not even human nature though. It's because it's not a way of people behave really. It's a way people want, you know, it may not even be truly, truly, truly cross-cultural. It may be even just like somewhere where Abrahamic religions have been, had influence or where, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Colonialism has had influence. Might be something like that. But I don't even think it is something like that. It might be, but it might not be, is what I'm saying. I don't I don't know. I'm not an expert. I can't tell you for sure. I don't think anyone can tell you for sure. Anyone who claims to be, to be able to tell you for sure is probably trying to sell you something. But um, from what I've seen, not just from this guy's videos, but from my own experience as well going to other countries and stuff. Because I've, I've been to other countries as a child, bear in mind. But I have been to other countries. You know, I think this should be self-evident that people like... You're able to make friends with someone even though they don't speak the same language as you. There is some sort of shared human connection. And that shared human connection is alcohol. Um, I mean, not really, but but significantly, yes. Like, as long as you're not in a culture like a Muslim country or some, some place where religiously they're not allowed to drink. Um, if you go to someone and you bring them alcohol... Or you bring them food. Food and alcohol are the two big things. Right? You bring them food or you bring them alcohol. They're going to be friendly with you. Like, there's there's something something there. There's something innate to to humanity. Or innate to, to, like, cross-cultural thing. That just everyone loves a good drink and loves a nice hot meal, you know? And that's, you know, that's the sort of thing I can appreciate. Um... And that's kind of why I think those who are trying to have weed be treated the same as alcohol are going to flop. Because the thing is, everyone, there's been centuries and centuries and centuries, possibly even, you know, thousands of years of culture in all of these places developed around alcohol. There's alcohol breweries, I mean, alcohol brewing evidence from like, before the Egyptians, right, before the ancient Egyptians, that's like more than 4,000 years ago we're talking. There's an there's a whole culture around drinking. And apart from a few places on Earth, there is not that same culture around smoking weed. There's just not. And even if there was, like, simply the effects it has on you are different. Now, over here in London especially with my age group, weed is definitely used in a similar social catalyst way as alcohol, right? Like, that's a good, it, it's it's true, but it's different. Like, the thing is with alcohol, the more you drink, if you get really drunk with some people that you've just met, you're going to be best friends with them, you're going to be singing and dancing and shit, but if you get really, really stoned with people you just met, you're just going to get freaked out. You just... Do they know I'm really stoned? Are they as stoned as me? You just get in your own head. You, you know, if, uh, maybe this is just a me thing, but like, I'm not the only one that reacts to weed this way. But if I smoke a bunch with the people I just met, I'm, I just start getting in my own head. I'm just like, so should, I, should I have said that? Do they hate me? Do they know I'm high? Even though they're all high, I'm like, do they know I'm high? This, yeah, this, this is why I think weed won't replace alcohol culturally. 
because because alcohol's effects are just different. Um, yeah, I don't know. But um, and also it's it's kind of a shared suffering thing. It's a very Christian thing here, or like uh, with weed you wake up the next morning you're basically fine except you're a little tired. With alcohol, you know, you've been out with your mates the whole night. And you, you next day you you wake up in the same house and you're both hungover as fuck and you can bond over that. That's another bonding experience. Even if you don't really feel it, you you know you're going through shared trauma. That's a bonding thing, which is not a good thing, but it is a thing. Um, there was something other point I was gonna make in this video, but I forgot what it was. Um, oh fuck, what was it? I was gonna talk about. My living situation in my last house. I don't know what my segue was supposed to be from this to my living situation in my last house. Um. Okay, cool. It's still recording. Um. I guess I'll just not do a segue. This will be the segue. I'm gonna take a big fat cloud. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow a big fat cloud at the camera, and that's gonna be the segue between these two topics. So, before I moved here, well, my coals are flooded, so I've got a bunch of fucking your vape liquid in my mouth. That's disgusting. I will spit that shit out into a tissue. That tasted like shit. Let me try this again. I'm gonna do it for my t-shirt so that the liquids don't get in my mouth. I don't know what I've done to this shit. So, in my last place I lived, in my dad's, I had a very different living situation than this, and a very unique and weird one. And the reason I bring this up is because recently I met with my dad. I met out with him for the first time in, like, quite a while since I moved. Since I, I say moved out. That's a very polite way of putting it. I was kicked out. They, they forcibly pushed, kicked me out of the house and told me to come here instead. Um, but, uh... I had my living situation there was quite interesting, unique. I don't know how you, it's pretty unique, I'd say. Not like, like no one in the world lives like this, but pretty unique. I wish I had some old footage or something to show you, but I don't really. But uh, I'll try to explain it like this: the room I was in was a room I shared with my brother, right? Um, and it was about. It was bigger than this room, quite significantly bigger than this room. Probably about double the size of this room. Imagine two, maybe even like two and a half times the size of this room, right? And it it had big bay windows opening on the front, and uh, there was my brother's bed off to this side. But about, let's say, a quarter of the room had a, a wall put in it, a big wall put in it. And there was a sliding door, and that was my section. And my section was basically an, a very complicated, advanced bunk bed. So there was my desk underneath, and there was like a sort of ladder. Very, it was sort of, it was a set of stairs that was so steep it was basically a ladder. Um, and that was where my bed was, right above where my desk was. And my desk was where I would have my computer, and my chair, and my drawers, and all that shit. And then behind me on the wall would be a bunch of, like, uh, closets, basically, where I kept all my clothes. Except, I never had that many clothes. You know, I had a drawer for t-shirts, a drawer for trousers, a drawer for pants, a drawer for socks, and um, a couple of jackets hanging up in, like, a little closet thing. And the rest of that space, which was a lot of space was taken up by other people's clothes in the house. My brother's clothes, my parents' clothes. Now, I've always said, ever since I lived there, why do you have your clothes in my room? Because I didn't have a very big room. I could... The, the, spa the, the, the whole room was big, but the space that was just my little bit that was walled off was about... A, like... Like... Uh, I don't know. About this big. Like, I could touch it with both my hands if I pushed this far, probably. 
It was very small. It was very comfy. In that it was tiny. It was like a coffin. But it wasn't actually comfy because my chair was very uncomfortable. It gave me back problems. It was like a cheap knockoff gaming chair. And it was bad. That place was terrible. Let me let me tell you. So first of all, my bed was a single bed that was too small for me. It was like a child sized bed. So my feet would stick out the end, which was just horrible. I only had one pillow and it was like a shitty cheap pillow. So my, I had neck problems because my neck was like that when I was sleeping. And I couldn't roll over in the night without falling out my bed. So I had a shitty single bed that wasn't even long enough. My feet would stick out the end if I stretch, stretched the whole way. Then I had to share the room with my brother. So he woke up way earlier than me and would always wake me up. But then I'd go back to sleep. And then because my parents kept their clothes and my brother's clothes in my room, they would come into my room and just take shit out the cupboard which would wake me the fuck up. And I think they just wanted to wake me up or they just thought like to spite me or something. They would always open the curtains and turn all the lights on. So I had to pull the duvet over my head so I could still stay asleep because they didn't give a fuck about me. So they would come in and get all the clothes out and they would see me me being still asleep as an inconvenience. Now, mind you, right, their idea of me sleeping late is not the rest of the world's idea of me sleeping late. Right now, I will admit, I sleep in way too late. I wake up at like 5 p.m. That's ridiculous, right? I wake up at like 5 p.m. because I'm nocturnal, basically. But to them, I woke up at like 10.30 a.m. then. And they saw that as me being basically nocturnal and like, it's ridiculous, you need to wake up earlier than that. You can't sleep until 10.30, right? It's ridiculous. So, they would wake me up uh, by turning all the lights on, coming in, making loads of noise, taking all the sh- like, opening every fucking drawer. And, you know, sometimes they'd even come up into my room and be like, wake up, wake up. It'd be very fucking annoying. And they, no matter how many times I told them to stop, they couldn't stop. Whatever. So that was number one reason. Second, as you know, I stay up late. I don't like being awake at the daytime. I like being awake at nighttime. So I could not make any noise at night. Not only did I have my brother sleeping like uh, maybe five meters away from me, but also he was a pretty heavy sleeper. But the wall I had on my other side was very thin. And directly on the other side of that wall was my stepmom where she slept, and if I, literally, even, I had like a rotating chair thing, you know, like like an office, the, the chair was like an office chair, like swivels, so if I would accidentally rotate my chair, and it would knock into that wall, she would be really pissed off, and she wouldn't say at that time, she would wait until the next day, and then she would have a go at me, so that was another thing, not only could I not even make any noise, which means no Discord calls, no playing Counter-Strike where you have to talk in the microphone, past like like uh let's say like 10 p.m 11 probably around 10 p.m right so no nothing like that past 10 p.m right so i would just be up watching anime watching youtube and shit i couldn't make any noise couldn't discord anyone um nothing even though yeah i was no discord was a thing but i couldn't really call anyone until late um so that was shit i also couldn't play music But now for the worst thing, which was in the winter, it was ridiculously cold, and in the summer, it was ridiculously hot. Especially the summer thing. It got so hot in my room in summer, it was ridiculous, because the windows in my room had been, like, painted over, and they wouldn't open. So it got so hot in summer. It was ridiculous. It was depressing as fuck. Um, It was fucked up. And I had no privacy because people would be coming in every fucking day. You know, it's not like now. My room isn't even messy, right? Now. Like this, I wouldn't like. I've got a couple clothes on the floor. That's it. Like my room, that's my room gets a little messier than this, but but like that's how I like it. I like it to be not one hundred percent clean because you know these things aren't just random shits. Like right? this is something I use every day. That's something I use like every other day, maybe. You know, the clothes are on the floor are clean, and they're stuff that, that I've worn for, like, maybe a couple hours, or, like, like for example, these trousers that are on the floor, I wore them today to go to the shops to buy this, and then to come back, which took, like, five minutes. I'm not going to go hang them back up in the fucking wardrobe after that, am I? It's fine that they're on the floor. You know, same with my shoes. It's fine. Where else am I going to put my fucking shoes? They stay on the floor. It's fine. It doesn't bother anyone. It's fine, because no one needs to come in here. 
but back in the day, if I had like a couple jumpers on the floor or something like that, people would get pissed off at me because they'd be like, oh, I need to go into your room to get clothes. Motherfucker, just step over it. Just walk on it. What's wrong with you? And they would literally, what happened was my stepmom would come in while I was out at school. My stepmom would come into my room, get all my shit, not just clothes, but stuff that was on my desk, like my like electronics and stuff that she didn't know what it was, like my microphone and my audio stuff, like all sorts of shit. Anything that was on my desk, even important bits of schoolwork sometimes that I'd left on my desk. And she would shove it into a fucking bin bag. She would shove it all into a bin bag so it got all crushed up. She'd close it up, she'd dump it on my chair, and then write a little note saying, Clean this up by tomorrow, or I'm throwing it all out. But it wouldn't even be that much stuff. So I'd end up cleaning it up because it would only take like 10 minutes to clean up. But I'd left it there because that's just practical. It was terrible. I'm glad I, I left. I, I, I was worried about leaving at first, but I'm glad I left. The reason I bring this up is because recently I met my, with my dad. And he finally, after years and years and years of, ask, of complaining, talking to him, finally admitted, yes, it was weird that we kept all of our clothes and all of our stuff in your room. That that is not normal. For so long, if I, if I complained about any of the, the circumstances, if I was like, isn't it a little strange that um, you forced me to cook for the whole family, or that you forced me to do the entire family's dishes, even though what I make... So they would, I bought, I had to buy my own food, right? Because they were like, you don't have a job. You don't, you don't contribute to the family. You have to buy your own food. So I bought my own food, not like grains. I could use the family's bread and rice and stuff like that. But I would have to buy protein and stuff like that for myself. So, so for example, if I'd like, if I went into the fridge and I was like, oh, some, some nice mints or some nice fish, and I took that and made it for myself, I would get fucking grilling. They'd be like, that was for your brother, or that was our dinner for tonight. You know, they would, because they're stupid. They wouldn't do one meal for the family like a normal family. They would have, they would first cook for my brother, and then I would go in and cook for myself, and then my mum and, I mean, my stepmom and my dad would go in and cook for themselves, and they would all make different shit, even though that makes no fucking sense. So, um, yeah, that was a thing. Why did I bring that up? Um, so yeah, I would have to do all the shit, right? I would have to clean, like, like, they would leave the washing up for my brother because I would always go in straight after when he ate. Like, I would wait for them to finish cooking for, for him, and then I would go in afterwards because otherwise, like, they would be pissed off at me because there's too many people in the kitchen. Uh, so I would wait until after they cooked for my brother then I would go in and cook for myself, which they would often, actually, if I was, if I went in too early, if I went in too early when they were still cook, or when they, if I went in too early to when they were just starting or had, uh, or were just about to start cooking for my brother, they would be like, oh, great, can you cook for him? And I would have to cook for him. And then I, I would obviously just double the amounts and eat whatever he ate, but he would have some... Like, he was very picky as a child. He's not picky anymore, but he used to be very picky. So I'd have to cook this very specific meal. It was all fucking complicated, and of course I would have to wash everything up. Like, when they finished when they finished cooking for my brother, they would just leave everything out, and we didn't have a dishwasher, so I'd have to wash everything by hand. They would just leave it out for me. This sounds like I'm complaining a lot. Obviously, this is not that bad. It's just chores, right? It's not like I'm, I'm being like, boo-hoo, oh, woe is me, woe is me, I had to wash a few plates, oh no. My life is so hard. What I am saying is specifically what they used to say is if I if I refused to like clean up my room or 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 you know I was like annoyed at them for coming in at ten at like ten ten o'clock nine o'clock waking me up. I would and and they were like you got to be part of the family. You got to participate in the family, motherfucker. I could not physically participate in this family harder. What are you on about? Yeah, that shit was bullshit, and this is the first time I have in my life a space for myself, a little independence, a little a little something that I live that isn't controlled by other people. 
you know? And they were obsessed with this idea that, like, the reason we make you cook for everyone... Sometimes they'd make me cook for the whole family. You know, they'd make me make a really big batch of um, bolognese sauce that they'd put in the freezer and eat for, like, weeks. Not just my brother, but the, them as well, my parents as well. And not me, though, because uh, I didn't buy that mint, so I wasn't allowed to eat it. Uh, sometimes I was. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes I was allowed to, but not always. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, their excuse would be, we're teaching you skills that you'll need when you're independent, when you move out. Motherfucker. <laughs> this is the opposite of independence. When I'm independent, am I going to be making enough fucking bolognese to feed an entire family? No. No, I'm eating fucking baked beans. No, I'm eating fish fingers, you stupid idiot. You don't know what it means to be independent. I cook for myself almost every day now. Not every day. My mum cooks for me sometimes. She'll make a meal together, especially on Sundays. She'll make a Sunday roast for us. Very thankful for that. And also thankful I don't have to pay for food because I live with my mum. I'm very thankful for that as well. I know. Big cost. Big thing I'm saving on. Might seem like I take it for granted. I definitely don't take it for granted. I'm very thankful for it. Um, I'm very gracious of of this this opportunity that I don't have to go out and work and I can live as a an artist, right? You know, I don't take that shit for granted. It's definitely something I think about a lot and think about that I'm lucky to have. The difference is that here, I can live in my room and I can stay up and I can talk to a camera at like, I don't even know my watch is. That's the other thing. Where the fuck is my watch gone? It should be around here somewhere. But I have no clue where it is. 3 o'clock in the morning. I can be here drinking wine at 3 o'clock in the morning and not have to worry about anything. Right? I can actually be an, a real human being as opposed to just a slave to the family unit. Which is nice. Even though I have to deal with some craziness from time to time. You know. My mother. Not the most stable person in existence. Um, but uh. You know, I get some independence. I get some real independence, not faux independence. Their idea of independence is you're independently allowed to contribute to the collective. That's not what independence means. I don't know if they... they I don't even think it's some weird generational thing. Because most people don't seem to think about... Think like that. Um, they also have very... You know, they're all fucking libtards, aren't they? My stepmom's a turf. Um... Yeah, that's a fun fact. I haven't confirmed it 100%, but uh, I'm pretty damn sure my stepmom is a turf. If I ever see her again, which I hope I don't, but if I ever do, I'm going to try and collect some genuine evidence that she's a turf. Because she's, um, uh, I don't know, it's not important. But I have I have some reasons to think so. Uh, um, so that's fun. And my dad's also, like, a libtard uh, so, and then there's me. I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. Record scratch, freeze frame. <sighs> this has been a really weird video. I don't think I've had a particular point that I'm making. How long has it been? 38 minutes? That's a long ass video. Um, oh yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to say. This is right at the end, so almost no one's going to see this. Um, but if you do see it, if you have watched this to the end, um, you should write a comment about it so that other people see it who don't choose to watch all the way to the end. Which is that Operation Finish Them All, um, I've realised that putting it out as like individual episodes about each show is, is not a very good format, because like... Um, some shows I only watch one episode of, I don't really have much to say. Some shows I have to watch like a, almost a whole season of, and I have loads to say. So Operation Finish Them All, where every episode is a different show, is a bad formula. So instead what I'm doing is, um, I'm still watching them all, but I'm going to make a video where I talk about everything that I have left in one video uh, at the end of the year. Probably I'll probably post it on like January the 1st or, or January the 2nd or something like that. So it's all going to come together right at the beginning of 2020. Uh, and that's going to be the big, the big, the big video. 
it's going to be like a much longer video where I talk about I talk about all the shows that I had to finish. Uh, and I can talk about them in depth with hindsight, not just while I'm watching them. It's going to be great, trust me. Uh, it might not be great, but uh, that's my plan. So, so Operation Finish Them All might seem like I gave up on it, but I haven't given up on it. I'm just going to do it all at once. I am still watching the shows and everything. It's a fuck ton of anime. I don't know how I'm going to fucking do it. It's too much. It's too much. Ugh. Anyway, I guess that's the end of this video. Glad I managed to make a video about this because it's been all on my mind. There's more stuff that's on my mind. I guess I'll come to that eventually. Um, goodbye.